where news comes first. This is ABC 7 Extra. Good evening, I'm Saul Sainz, and this is ABC 7 Extra Sunday Edition. Thank you for sharing your Sunday evening with us. The Mexican peso is gaining strength in boasting about the strong currency. Mexican President Manuel López Obrador is calling it the super peso. But as you're about to find out, a strong peso, peso could be a double-edged sword. Good news for some, bad news for others. The signs on Marquis up and down currency exchange businesses in downtown El Paso show a change in economy. The value of the peso is up around 18% from just a few months ago. It's good news for some merchants who are counting on the peso to stay strong. I asked this merchant how the value of the peso is affecting sales. Salazar says sales at this business are going up. But the news is not good for Gabriel Matos. He came into this currency exchange to cash in his pesos. Matos says he's getting fewer dollars. I asked him why, because he says it's more expensive. 17 pesos and 30 centavos for a dollar. Matos says his purchasing power is weaker once he exchanges his pesos for dollars. Back at this business along El Paso Street, Salazar says customers from Juarez are spending more because their pesos are worth more. I asked this merchant to compare sales between last week and this week. Salazar says last week, sales hovered around $300 daily. She says this week, sales are reaching $800 or more. And joining us to talk about the Mexican currency and the impact it's having on our economy is Tani Berg. Mr. Berg is a real estate developer and has vast knowledge about the business community across the borderland. Also joining us is UTEP economics professor Tom Fullerton. Professor Fullerton keeps track of the economy in our region. I want to welcome you both to ABC 7 Extra Sunday Edition. Thank, Thank you, so. you. Thank you so. Let's start with you, Tani. Does the strong peso only affect downtown businesses or does it stretch to other parts of El Paso? No, no, no. The, the strong peso, you would think, affects the entire community. Uh, the impact of the Mexican national on the El Paso economy is profound. Uh, about 52 cents, believe it or not, out of every dollar, for example, that's spent at Cielo Vista Mall is coming from a Mexican national, not from our local economy. But that that number and eventually the profits that are derived from those sales uh, spread throughout all over our community, from insurance salesmen to housing to everything. So the answer is the impact of the Mexican consumer on El Paso uh, historically has been a major, major factor in the success of El Paso as a community. So are you seeing the impact now? I know this just re recently started. The peso started going up a couple of weeks back. Have you seen that impact already? Well, the impact of the strength of the Mexican peso has not, the average Mexican has not yet realized the benefit of the impact of the stronger peso. They do have more buying ability when they come to the United States and spending dollars, but the bottom line here is a lot of Mexicans derive their money from people who work in the United States and send money to Mexico. And if they're sending dollars back, they're getting less pesos for those dollars. So eventually, um, it trickles back into the fact that we have a pretty stable economy. Things are pretty stable, and uh, although it affects across the board the entire city of El Paso, we haven't seen a profound increase in sales, retail sales, for example. I guess the controller's reports for the third quarter will show us whether or not we've had tr tremendous increase in retail sales. I don't think so. Professor Fulton, what are you seeing about this so-called super peso and its effect on commerce? What are you? What are your? Uh, what are your studies uh, showing? Well, in, let's see. In terms of the peso gaining so much strength in a short period of time, it's important to recognize that the peso was undervalued prior to January, and it was undervalued during the entire Trump administration, and it took it a, a while to build back. Now it's about at its at what its uh, you know fundamental value should be. Uh, so it's it's not it's not too hot and it's not too cold. Uh, I know that the, the president down in Mexico City is excited about it, but really it's about where it should be. If it goes beyond this point, then we could start seeing some of the old problems. In terms of the impacts, well, historically, whenever the peso um, let's see, increases by 20% against the dollar, in El Paso specifically, this generally translates into additional retail sales to residents of northern Mexico. Uh, in the context of 2023, 
what the historical data indicate is that eventually it will translate into about one million dollars of extra retail sales every day in El Paso. Now, uh, the that's CD, awesome. <laughs> it's a, it's a good number. It'll yeah. help a lot of businesses. But you know the the economic data and the economic model simulations are one thing. We always have to do what what Tanny Berg is just suggesting. And that is keep an ear to the ground because it may take a, a while for those effects to materialize. But historically, that's what the indication is. Problem is, beginning in 2015. Let's see, uh, the history changed a little bit in that we had a presidential candidate who eventually won the election who made a lot of incendiary remarks about, uh, let's see, uh, residents of Mexico. That may have discouraged a lot of people from coming here as often as they would have. Now we've got a governor in Austin who enjoys making the same types of incendiary remarks yeah. and it doesn't help our merchants at all or the merchants in Laredo, McAllen or Brownsville. but. Um, you know, what the economists recommend to policymakers and what policymakers actually do are two separate things. Uh, Tani, in the one minute that I have before we go to break, have you ever seen anything like this before? You've been in El Paso forever. What, what have you seen? The most Im impactive in El Paso has been peso devaluations, when the peso is actually right. devalued and we've seen a loss of business because of that. We've seen the adjustments, these floating of the peso. It's, this is unprecedented in, in the amount of, of adjustments so quickly, um, but we in El Paso are really resilient to the movement of the peso and, and uh, what we believe is in the long term, keeping business strong and steady, that's our path. Okay, and we're gonna take a really quick break, but when we come back, we'll talk about the downfall of having a strong peso. If you're watching ABC7 Extra Sunday Edition, where news comes first. Level up your career today. Don't wait until 2024. Enroll now at Southwest University. Start your new career in the medical field. Serve your community and enroll now by September 22nd in the nursing, sonography, or radiology programs. We offer flexible schedules and short terms so you can finish faster. Grow your mindset and career and learn all the core values to succeed in the nursing, sonography, or radiology fields. For more information, visit us at southwestuniversity.edu. Last day to enroll is September 22nd. Southwest University. Start today. What an incredible gift we have in the Eucharist. This gift cannot be kept to ourselves. Today I am here to encourage you to commit faithfully to the Progress Catholic Ministry Appeal. Your gift allows our ministries to offer services and resources to our parishes, schools, and families. Please join me by prayerfully discerning your gift today. Thank you, and may God continue to bless you and your families. <laughs> back again, huh? <laughs> you know I had to come back. <laughs> you must love losing. Do you know I let you win the last one, right? Oh, really? You feel lucky? I feel lucky and you're buying the next one. You've got to win one first. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You know what really feels like a win? Getting the spicy and delicious green chili double cheeseburger for just three bucks. Only at McDonald's. It's safe to say that a great day's work starts with a great night's sleep. So no matter what kind of job you have, Denver Mattress has the right mattress for you. So shop the extended Labor Day sale today because the more you buy, the more you save. Save 100 bucks on every 1000 you spend or get up to $700 off select adjustable mattress sets. Check out the Summit for only $299.99 or save up to $300 on our Denver Mattress brand lineup plus four years no interest and free shipping. Denver Mattress, the easiest way to get the right mattress. Welcome back to ABC 7 Extra Sunday Edition. I also want to welcome back my guest, Tenny Berg. Mr. Berg is a real estate developer and has vast knowledge about the business community across the borderland. Also joining us is UTEP economics professor Tom Fullerton. Professor Fullerton keeps track of the economy in our region. Let's start with you, Professor. With a strong peso, is it a good time for Americans to vacation to Mexico if Americans get less bang for their buck? Yeah, anybody visiting Mexico now is not going to enjoy the 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 um, low prices after the exchange rate conversion that they did uh, from 2015 up until 2022. Uh, on the other hand, let's see, the peso is not over uh, overvalued against the dollar. Excuse me, yeah, overvalued against the dollar, and so they're not getting. Let's see, they're getting what they're paying for. They're not getting an artificial bargain due to the currency market, and so you know, the, let's see. 
Uh, Mexico is still a good country to visit, uh, but the super discounts that occurred during that seven year period between 2015 and 2022, at least for the time being, are a thing of the past. They're going to pay a little bit more for the piña colada, huh? That's true. <laughs> Tanny, let's talk about how the genesis of all this, how all this started. How is it that we came, to, we got to this point where the peso has just, you know, been so strong? Well, as Dr. Fulton said, he was right on the money. And politics have a lot to do with the fluctuations of currencies. And the politics both in Mexico and the politics in the United States affect how these currencies eventually get settled. And so we've had uh, an adjustment in our policy towards Mexico over the last four years, six years, and and Mexico has had an adjustment in their politics uh, in the course of Obrador's presidency. So I think those two things together uh, played a huge role in this fluctuation. Um, but I think Mexico's cost of living is still pretty much lower than ours, so that yeah. a trip to Mexico is still worthwhile. And after four or five of those piña coladas, I don't think you'll care one way or the other. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, Tenny, I want to follow up with you, and this question is actually for both of you. What impact or what effect will the strong peso have on the maquiladoras? Well, I, just from my perspective, and I think Dr. Fulton will agree, is that the fact is Americans will end up paying more for goods that are produced in Mexico for the short run. Um, uh, we have a lot of automobile manufacturers who produce parts uh, in northern Mexico, uh, especially in Juarez, which has the greatest accumulation of maquiladoras in the entire country of Mexico. So those goods that are produced in those countries are going to cost more and eventually trickle down into the consumers in this country. So Mexico is a producing country. Um, its economy is very much based now on production. And at the end of the day, any goods that have to be produced in Mexico uh, using pesos and then eventually converted into dollars when it's transferred into this economy, uh, those goods are going to go up in value. And unfortunately, that's going to mean the consumer will end up paying more. Professor, are you seeing the same thing? Yeah, the, the cost of production in Mexico has increased for international manufacturers as a consequence of the appreciation of the peso against the dollar. Uh, it's good for retailers all along the border on the northern side of the boundary, uh, but it has raised the cost of production in Mexico. Historically, that would have caused direct foreign investment to subside. It would have reduced the demand for workers at these factories, but let's see, there's a new factor going on right now, two new factors. One is the trade war between the United States and China, and the second is the USMCA agreement. And the USMCA agreement has attracted literally millions of additional investments uh, to northern Mexico. A lot of those investments are coming straight into Ciudad Juarez with subsidiary investments on the north side of the border. And as a consequence of that, let's see, the investment effect is outweighing the currency effect. And so we're still going to see international manufacturing expand in, in Mexico with uh, business services and warehousing services increasing in El Paso and other places along the border. Now I'm going to continue with you, Professor. As you well know, we have um, many uh, people from Mexico, uh, Mexican nationals who cross the border and work over here in either El Paso or other parts of the border, and they, they send money back to their families in Mexico, whatever part of Mexico, call it Durango, call it uh, in Guadalajara, wherever. But what impact does this have on them when they're trying to send money back? Well, let's see, what it really impacts, as Tani uh, noted a few minutes ago, is it impacts the families that receive those remunerations. And they are receiving less bang for their bucks, literally, because the dollars buy fewer pesos now than was the case six months ago. However, in terms of how the overall economy operates, it's actually a better situation to have the peso and dollar, let's see, valued where they should be. Because, let's see, those distortions, they always help certain sectors of the economy at the expense of other sectors, but it's best to have things, you know, at their fundamental values and let the economy operate as it should. So over the long run, this is a better situation than having an artificially undervalued uh, currency in Mexico. Okay. Uh, Tenny, your thoughts on how, if this is sustainable, the fact that it's so, so strong right now, between 18 and 20 percent, is this sustainable? Do you think it'll last for a long time? No, as Dr. Fulton said, I think this is an adjustment from where the peso should have been all along, it should have been climbing to wherever it is. Uh, I don't think it's sustainable. I don't think the Wall Street Journal feels it's sustainable. I don't think most national econom economists think it's sustainable. It's something that's happening as an adjustment now for this moment. Um, 
The main thing for us is we want things to be steady. I think El Pasoans and El Paso businessmen uh, just like things being on an even keel and watching it grow. Business will grow. Uh, I think, uh, as Dr. Fulton mentioned to me earlier, I think inflation played a huge role um, in the decision on the part of the Mexican National Bank to raise its interest rates, which eventually kicked into this uh, strengthening of the Mexican peso. But, it, but that's not a sustainable uh, system. And so I think that eventually we will find uh, equilibrium. The peso, as Dr. Fulton said, will be where it needs to be. The dollar will be where it needs to be, and we can go on doing business the way we have been doing now for 400 years here on the border. Okay. We're going to take another quick break, and when we come back, I'll ask my guests what it will take for that peso to come back down to where my guests were talking about, where it was before it increased 18 and 20 percent. We'll be right back. Watch Smart Money Thursday on ABC 7 and 4 with Myro Capital Management. You'll learn how to save money the right way and make better decisions to set you and your family up for financial success. Smart Money Thursday on ABC 7 and 4, sponsored by Myro Capital Management. <laughs> back again, huh? <laughs> you know I had to come back. <laughs> you must love losing. You know I let you win the last one, right? Oh, really? You feel lucky? I feel lucky and you're buying the next one. You've got to win one first. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You know what really feels like a win? Getting the spicy and delicious green chili double cheeseburger for just three bucks. Only at McDonald's. Would you like to work in New York City or Chicago? Get the chance at Southwest University with our associate's degree in culinary arts. Don't wait until 2024 and apply by September 22nd and get a high-level education by chefs Carlos Caetan, Mikel Alonso, and Jonathan Gomez Luna. Secure your spot in our program starting this September with our exclusive scholarship only at Culinary Institute by Southwest University. For more information, visit us at southwestuniversity.edu. Last day to enroll is September 22nd. Culinary Institute by Southwest University. A passion for food. At Long John Silver's, every bite is its own golden treasure. Thanks to thick, flaky Alaskan fish, hand-dipped in our signature batter, and fried to golden perfection. Sail in for a $6 fish basket or order ahead at LongJohnSilver's.com. Fish yeah! With Chevy Silverado and Silverado HD, you can take on the mountains. Or you can move them. With the power of up to 36,000 pounds of max available towing and the confidence of an available 13.4-inch diagonal touchscreen. Whatever your mountain, there's a Silverado for you. Get 0% financing plus make no monthly payments for 90 days on all Silverado 1500 pickups. Plus get $750 cash allowance on this Silverado. Chevy drives Texas. Find new roads. Welcome back to this third and final segment of ABC7 Extra Sunday Edition. I also want to welcome back my guest, Tenny Berg. Mr. Berg is a real estate developer and has a lot of knowledge about all things development here in the, in the borderland. And also joining us is UTEP economics professor Tom Fullerton, who has his ear to the ground and letting us know what economy, the economy is like right here in the borderland. So for, I want to start, this question is for both of you. What will it take for the peso to come back down? We know, obviously, we know it's it's pretty inflated right now, 18 between 18 and 20 percent. What's it going to take for it to come back to where it was originally before it, it, the the Mexican president called it the super peso? Well, hopefully, it doesn't come down. Hopefully, it stays right where it is because it's about where it should be. Now, if let's see, the Mexican central bank starts lowering interest rates. That will, of course, cause, let's see, reduce the demand for financial instruments in Mexico because yields will be lower. And potentially that could cause an outflow of, of pesos in favor of dollar-denominated investments. Uh, hopefully that, that if, when that happens, it won't cause too much of an effect because simultaneously, if uh, in, any inflationary efforts in the United States are also successful, interest rates will go down here, so the yield differential will not change. Uh, so hopefully the peso is going to remain where it is. The problem is, as Tanny mentioned earlier, let's see, uh, international politics can rear its ugly head and that could cause, let's see, a lot of uncertainty. And then we could end up with, with what your question asks about, we could end up with a much weaker peso than is normally the case. That'll hurt retailers in El Paso. It'll benefit at least for, for a, a, a period of time Let's see, manufacturers in northern Mexico, it'll, it'll reduce the cost of production over there artificially, but it will reduce it. Do you believe that Santa Teresa, because as you well know, there's a lot of development going on in Santa Teresa right now, and do you believe that Santa Teresa will continue to grow 
Uh, they're expanding their, their airport over there to, to include cargo planes and whatnot. Do you think it'll continue to grow with the peso being so strong? Yes, uh, let's see, USMCA is causing investments in, uh, let's see, all the industrial parks across Ciudad Juarez and these new northwestern industrial parks, let's see, that are in Jeronimo as well as in Santa Teresa. So growth in Santa Teresa, uh, you know, my simulations indicate that it's going to continue uh, for quite some time. In fact, we may eventually start seeing spillover growth as far west as Columbus. Uh, Tani, who benefits the most from a strong peso? I mean, we know that Mr. and Mrs. Rodriguez down in the lower valley probably won't make a buck out of this, but who is benefiting the most out of a strong peso? Well, obviously, investors who are investing money into Mexico and getting the yields that they're expecting, they're making the greatest return. But at the end of the day, you know, when the peso devalued, we didn't, we, we took it in stride and we went, this is an adjustment the other way. And I think that we need to realize that these fluctuations in the, in the monetary markets are a natural, uh, especially on a border like El Paso and, and Juarez or Mexico and the United States, they're a natural phenomena. Let me just for one second address your question on Santa Teresa. And I think that the political climate in New Mexico seems to be more inviting than the political climate in Texas. How so? I think that the, the government of New Mexico is encouraging as much business as it can into the Santa Teresa area uh, by giving incentives, by giving state incentives, by the governor herself coming down and, and welcoming these businesses that are looking at Santa Teresa as potential uh, growth uh, investments. Um, I just don't know that the attitude of Austin is equal to the attitude of Santa Fe when it comes to attracting especially Mexican investment, Mexican business uh, on the border. And I think that we're seeing the effect of that. Santa Teresa is growing. Their taxes are lower. There are more incentives now to going into Santa Teresa than there are to coming into El Paso. And I think that you're seeing the effect of that. And I think that's going to continue no matter what the value of the peso is. Professor, we've talked about all those who can benefit um, development and, and obviously the investors who are coming over to either New Mexico or, or, or Texas. But will this strong peso, its effects, will it expand to other parts of our, of our economy, of our, uh, say, for instance, uh, education or medicine or anything like that? Will it expand? Will it have an impact there? Well, international commerce is going to keep expanding here in the region. Uh, in terms of the strong peso, uh, in addition to the merchants in El Paso benefiting from it, it's important to recognize that the consumers in Ciudad Juarez are benefiting from this because there are a lot of goods and services that they would like to purchase here in El Paso, and now it, those goods and services are a lot more affordable for them, so that, that helps their welfare as, uh, also. All right, Tani, real estate, let's talk real estate. Do you think more people are going to be uh, coming over to El Paso and buying more homes over here or maybe even in New Mexico? Well, the peso being stronger means that dollars, uh, that it's better for them to buy property over here. But I think we've always had, historically, we've always had Mexican nationals looking uh, at investing in, in on this side of the border, whether it's in El Paso or Phoenix or Austin or anywhere else. And I think that'll continue. I don't think that's going to change. I think the key word that we're leaving out is inflation. I think the big deal for Mexico and for the United States is we're trying to keep inflation at bay. And I think that raising values of currencies or, or doing whatever we have to do to be able to keep inflation at, uh, at, at a heel or someplace where we can control it, I think that's the major impact of a move like monetary fluctuations or anything that's going on in the United States or in Mexico. And now theoretically, Professor, more a better economy usually equals more jobs. Do you foresee something like that happening here in the borderland where we'll have more jobs available? Yes, the borderplex economy is expanding. Las Cruces, El Paso, Ciudad Juarez, they're all expanding. Uh, better jobs with higher salaries and wages are becoming available. There's more business opportunities, and so the expansion of international commerce uh, tends to always benefit uh, the borderplex regional economy, and I don't think 2023 and 2024 are going to be exceptions to that rule. Uh, the thing is, there's all the, the um, risks out there, and there's a lot of very substantial risks out there, and, and 
Uh, it's almost never a smooth ride. We like stability. Investors really like stability. Uh, and let's see, there's no guarantee of stability. Uh, you look at what's going on in, in um, Eastern Europe, you look at you know, potentially what's going to go on uh, in the Taiwan Straits. Uh, you know, North Korea just launched another nuclear submarine this week. Uh, there's a lot of uncertainty out of there, and that could end up uh, impacting global economic conditions. And if that occurs, you know, we can't avoid at least a portion of the fallout. So you know, there's, a, there's a lot of things to be concerned about. But for now, the border region uh, economy is expanding, and that's translating into good jobs as well as good business opportunities. Well, one thing we can definitely count on is a bumpy ride. <laughs> Professor Fullerton and Tannenberg, thank you so much for joining us in the evening. Thank you. And I want to thank you for watching. I'm Saul Sainz, and this has been ABC7 Extra Sunday Edition. Good night and buenas noches. Thank you for watching. ABC7 News is now available on any of these streaming services, as well as the KVIA News and KVIA Weather and Traffic apps.